Welcome to Stories and Songs, a series of interviews about musicians in the world of jazz and improvisation. I'm Andrea Keller, and it's my great pleasure to be talking to Chris Davis today. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, now, my first question is, what have been the pivotal events in your musical journey? Hmm. Uh, well, the first one was probably when I was 13, um, and I... Uh, joined the jazz band at school in my, in my junior high school. And my teacher, Kevin Wilms, was a big jazz fan. And he gave me a, a bunch of records. And, and one of those records was the Miles Davis record, My Funny Valentine, Four and More. And um, I took that home and I couldn't stop listening to it. <laughs> I just loved it. So um, I think, you know, meeting him and uh, connecting with some of my other peers at school, um, was really pivotal. There were some young people that were very talented and excited about jazz and improvising and we'd get together every weekend and play and learn standards and listen to music together and you know it was just a wonderful experience and a way to be introduced to jazz and it, it got me very excited. I was invigorated to learn more about the music and kind of went on from there to the University of Toronto and um, yeah, that's <laughs> sort of started my journey there. Um, so that was that was pivotal. And then also um, when I went to the BAMP Center in 2000, I went twice, but the second time I went, um, that's where I met uh, Tony Malaby, a great saxophone player. And uh, yeah, they were, there was a real um, focus on improvised music at the workshop at that time. And I had really knew nothing about improvised music. Um, I was playing a lot of standards, playing a lot of bebop. And so when I came to the workshop, you know, it was just three weeks of improvising and um, I opened my mind to other possibilities in the music. And, you know, in, in some ways I was really kind of confused by what was happening, but, you know, also curious to see people like, you know, Tony and Angelica Sanchez and Ben Maunder, Dave Ballou, these really great improvisers just excited and like incredible sounds and and you could tell they were just there was something going on there even though I didn't understand it just the passion with which they played and they spoke about the music really drew me in um so when I moved to New York a year later I connected in with Tony and Angie and and all the people I mentioned and you know they kind of took me under their wing and said hey come on over let's you know let's cook some food and play some sessions and and play some, you know, improvise, <laughs> improvise and play some music together. Um, so that was a really, you know, important pivotal moment for me, um, transitioning from playing more standards and forms and tunes um, to playing more improvised music. And then I would say the third pivotal moment was just being in New York for those 10 years. Um, I, I've been there for 20 years now, but the first 10 years were really, really important. Uh, only because I was out seeing music every day. I mean, seeing all sorts of <laughs> people, you know, all sorts of different kinds of music. Um, I saw a lot of music with without piano, and I think that had some kind of influence on the way that I, um, you know, the way I started playing within improvised music and composing. Um, yeah, so those 10 years, and then I was also playing, just playing every day, playing sessions every day in my living room annoying my neighbors. It didn't matter. We were just, you know, we just wanted to play and try things. And um, I think that was a really, really, really important part of my development as an, as an improviser and composer. Yeah, fantastic. And what obstacles have you had to overcome during your musical journey? And how have you dealt with them? Um, well, I mean, I guess just talking about New York, one big obstacle was just dealing with the immigration side of things and figuring out how can I stay in New York as an artist. And that took a while to figure out um, and a lot of, you know, legal work and a lot of money, um, a lot of time and energy just into dealing with that element of things. So um, that was definitely a, a big obstacle uh, to overcome. Also, um, I think as a as a woman in jazz, um, I ended up because I entered the more improvised community. There were a lot more women playing in that community at that time. So, uh, you know, maybe some of the the issues that women face um, in jazz, I I didn't maybe experience those as much as as others and other women that I've spoken to. 
Um, but one big thing is uh, I was married to a musician and we were always playing together. And so people would kind of see us as, you know, as a package. And that was, you know, I didn't really realize it at the time, but later after we kind of parted ways and I started playing with other people, I realized I kind of made a mistake in that I didn't develop my own community. I kind of relied on him and his community to, you know, help me build mine. Um, and that, you know, that really just it didn't work very well. So I think it's really important for young women to, for everyone to figure out their own community outside of their relationships. Um, and I try to encourage my students also to just keep that in mind because, you know, often musicians do end up in partnerships with other musicians and it's just, you know, it's just something that, that everybody kind of has to deal with. Yeah, great. And do you have a motto or a personal philosophy that guides you? Or is there some advice that you'd like to, I mean, you've just given some great advice, but is there more advice that you'd like to give to young musicians? Um, well, you know, I think, I mean, I said this in an interview the other day, but jazz to me is about innovation and self-expression. So, you know, there was, there's kind of a pressure to sometimes to think about jazz as, you know, one thing, like it has to swing or we have to play changes or, you know, this, this kind of, I mean, this, this doesn't really matter anymore at this point, you know, it's really about, about expressing yourself through improvisation and, you know, expressing the here and now and trying to find a way to have your voice you know, in the music. So um, I would just say, keep that in mind as you move forward. You know, this is a, you know, it's a career, but it's also a life choice. And it's a long game, you know, people, people who go into careers and, you know, finance or real estate or whatever, you can have a great job in a few years and be making a lot of money. This is a, a lifetime commitment. It's a, it's a long game. So, you know, you really have to believe in yourself, believe in what you're doing, believe in the process, you know, believe in innovation and self-expression. And if that's your driving force, then you're going to, you're going to do great. Yeah, really well said. Thank you. Um, and could you nominate a song or an album of yours that's particularly significant or important or special in some way to you and just tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, sure. Um, I just released a, a new album with Ingrid Laubrock, the great saxophone player um, from Germany and who now lives in New York. And we've been playing together um, for, I don't know, maybe 12 years now. And she's been a really important collaborator. And we played in a lot of different groups together. Um, I played in her group, Anti House. We played in the group Paradoxical Frog together. Um, just, you know, as I mentioned, finding your community, she was one of the people that, you know, I, it took me a while, but I found her and, you know, she became part of my community and, and I became part of hers. So um, she's a really important uh, musician, composer to me, and uh, we collaborated on this project called Blood Moon. And the record just came out this past year on Intact. And it just, it features both of our compositions um, in a duo format, piano and saxophone. And uh, yeah, check it out. Can't wait to hear it. Thank you so much for your time today, Chris, and for all your um, great advice and wisdom that you've shared with us. I really appreciate it. And wishing you all the very best with everything. Thank you. Thanks so much.